I've always painted, always, all my life. I think painting is kind of a, it's a process of discovery, and you discover yourself when you're painting. You're an explorer. You find out who you are, you find out about yourself. I love nature. I love looking at the things in nature, and I try to express it on the painting. Not actual forms themselves, but interpretations of it. I think what makes her work different is the specificity of her references to nature. I was trying to think of any other artist working in this tradition who did it quite as explicitly as Myra did, and I couldn't come up with one. I tried to do work on unprimed canvas. That's with no filler on the canvas, no gesso. And it absorbs the paint. It's a whole different process. You know, it's like walking off a cliff, because you have to put the paint on with some, you know, <laughs> vim and vigor, but you don't know how it's really going to set. I had a problem with this painting. Um, I started out with the whole ground, luminous, all of that, but I couldn't quite resolve it. At the end, I had to resort to putting this Japanese paper, this big rectangle here, and it pulled it all together. And on top of that, I drew charcoal lines. It's, it's nothing I know ahead of time. It just tells me as I'm working, it needs a punch here, it needs a punch there. This brought the sides together. All these definitions pulled it together, and I needed this paper, which I tried not to use on all of them. This needed it. What I see is a... a a uh, penetration of the pigment into the fabric, which is not possible with paper. It's a different kind of surface. And you can't do that kind of large-scale painting on unprimed canvas without having a lot of confidence and know where you're going. When it's right, it's terrific, because it looks just like you breathed the paint on. I put down a whole ground of these colors, and then I started to put the details in of the nature parts I like. And at the end, it really needed something. So I took a bucket of paint, I dripped the, the paint on it, then I turned it upside down, and I had to know just when to stop it before it dripped all the way. And this, I think, is what makes the painting, this definition. Without it, it would be too pretty, too soft, but this gives it some punch. You're able to enjoy that kind of beautiful passage of a beautiful color because there is this dark black drip at the bottom. There's a, a range of color that she's balancing from really ugly and harsh to very delicate and gorgeous. Light in a, in a work of art is really a very personal thing. When it's very beautiful or very felt, you just respond to it. There's so much life and energy and, and light in these paintings. There's almost that same oriental light, the light that you see at the so-called golden hour in Asia. This is another one that was a very good experiment that turned out very well for me because the luminosity of the paint on the raw canvas comes through. And the way I pulled this all together was this big green splash. And it gives off a nice light. That's when I know a painting is done. I know it's giving off a beautiful luminosity. She's just, she's the mistress of light. There's also a very interesting sort of symbolism running through much of the painting that indicates the dimension and the complexity of the work. There is a sense of poetry as a poet would use words, she uses uh, layers. And so there are references to feelings, there are references to moods, there are references to places or cultures, but they're not specific. If you look at the canvas, you almost can reach into it. It's almost as if she's created a kind of misty, veiled interior. The color is, it's like dawn. It's called 
New Dawn. And I love, I get a sense of peace from this one. And um, colors I don't usually use. And all of these bellflower shapes is something, it's a vocabulary of forms I have. I always use them because these are not really flowers, they're markers, oval markers in space. And it's all about relationships, how this relates to that, to this, and it makes a, a little universe, really. The colors and layers imply certain depths. It could be water, it could be layers of mountains or rocks or streams or whatever. And what's interesting about the color is that it's used so much as accent. People ask me why I have this Japanese look, and I really don't know why. I've always loved Japanese art. And it may be because of the space. Is the space that's not filled is just as important as the space that has objects in it. The synthesis of Eastern and Western ideas, I think it owes a lot to her studies with Hans Hoffman, uh, with uh, the whole idea of fields of color and then overlaying these stencils and these different sort of um, atmospheric um, screens, basically. It's a tradition in art, in modern art, of artists going and pulling in sources, sources that are other. And I think that she's tapping into that. I think what I respond to is the delicacy of the hand of, of the work and capturing the, the, the energy of nature. I find it thrills me that she's succeeded in the way she has. This, this show has a very, very strong uh, individual identity. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.